it for you. Hello and welcome to the video. In this video I will be showing you how good the support in Brewfather has become for controlling the Grainfather Bluetooth controller and how you can start using it now yourself if you have either a paid premium license or are within the first 30 days of a new account when premium comes along for free. Naturally this support is still in beta but things are shaping up very nicely and the developer is quickly making changes as needed during the beta process. In fact further changes may have already been made since this video was created depending on when you are watching this. The developer's intention is to run the beta for as long as possible to make sure that by the time it's actually ready it is very solid. Let's now look at what you can expect. The goal set out by the Brewfather developer is to offer a direct replacement of the Grainfather Connect software that is not limited to smart devices but available to devices ranging from phones, tablets, laptops and desktop computers. In addition to this, the developer's plans are to expand this software further in time to fully utilise the Brewfather platform and what it can offer Grainfather Connect users along with other features like delayed start, for example. This is of course great news for Grainfather users. This Bluetooth control feature currently works for testing with Google Chrome and other Chromium based browsers like the new Microsoft Edge. Naturally you will also need to make sure that you have Bluetooth on your device and also that it is enabled. At present you can use a computer or an Android device. Support for other browsers and iOS is not available at this present time. Let's get started by opening Brewfather and then click into the settings section. You should then navigate a little down into use to the power up subsection. Here you will find the Grainfather Bluetooth control setting. Then all you need to do is move this slider on the right to the right to enable it and read the warning. Naturally as this is officially in beta you need to use this at your own risk. I don't hold any responsibility here either, just in case you were wondering. Also found in this area are written instructions should you wish to refer to them, but I will be running through all of this in this guide anyway. Let's now load a recipe, I've made one especially for this particular video as you can see. Then go up to the top right and select the green brew button. This will then take you into the batches section, from here go into the brewing tab. You will see underneath the tracker there is a brew controller section. Click the start button to the right and this box will open allowing you to pair and connect. You will then be greeted with a new box on the top left of your browser. Your grandfather connect should now be shown for pairing. You will now see this section for control which is found underneath the brew tracker. Test this out by clicking the buttons on the panel and watch them work with your controller. Then you can send the recipe to your controller and you will see it move into that familiar mode. You will also get a highlight of what is shown on the Connect Controller's screen within the Brewfather UI as shown now. This familiarity will take place throughout the process and Brewfather will give you the option to use its controls for the pump, heat and set buttons, along with the ability to stop or pause the brew. You will also notice during the process that Brewfather will show you the temperature in a more precise form by adding temps of Celsius as shown here. This I find useful in time planning during the brew. Another area that is very interesting is that during the ramp up to the boil you will see a set temperature of 120 Celsius. Thomas the developer of Brewfather has informed me that this is part of the standard settings given by Grainfather. Naturally if you wish to change this then you can by using the set temp feature within Brewfather. However do be aware that changing this to 100 Celsius as shown in this example will result in 70% power. Changing the temperature to 105C puts 100% power down again though, using the set temperature feature within Brewfather. This is all due to the fact that the Grainfather Connect uses a PID algorithm to smooth temperatures to avoid overshooting. Naturally this is only relevant for mashing temperatures though, so workarounds like this are used for during the boil. As this is a beta you may be concerned about bugs. I am sure there is probably something still left to be found but personally I have not encountered any bugs during my testing. The only issue I have found so far with this is where the Grainfather Connect loses connection to Bluetooth. Naturally this is not a Brewfather issue though. Should this occur then simply click the connect button on the right hand side of the Brewfather UI. This button will then revert back into showing disconnect. If and only if you had to turn off the Grainfather Connect controller to get Bluetooth to work again then you will need to resend the recipe. 
Under the current beta build, you will then need to set the duration of each step to zero to move the controller to the step you were at before your Bluetooth connection got disconnected. I suspect that a new feature could be coded in that will actually make this catch-up process faster and easier, but it is no great hardship really as it is. Naturally, you can also protect yourself against this happening by keeping the distance between your device and the Kinect controller as short as possible. I only came across this as I was having my computer and Kinect controller one floor apart in my house to make this recording. If you are a Grainfather user who has not yet tried Brewfather, then you may be wondering what all of the fuss is actually about, and why so many users of various brewing software, including Grainfather users, are moving to Brewfather. In fact, in a recent survey on my Facebook group, this revealed that Brewfather is by far the most used software by members, having almost 1,000 votes compared to its nearest competitor, which was Beersmith, with just over 250 votes. The reasons for this naturally will vary, but include things like a preference for the Brewfather UI, and the fact that it can be used in the same way no matter if you're using it on your mobile or your desktop computer. Many also like the very easy feel that Brewfather has, compared to other software, as well as the intuitive way that it is all laid out. For example, on a desktop it is especially nice to see all of your recipe's components together on one screen, without any scrolling required. Brewfather offers a very stable platform for users, but also a beta platform for those that are happy to try out new features and ideas and general software additions, which is another clear strength of Brewfather, because it is being constantly updated with new features rather than allowing new bugs. It is actually totally free to use as long as you limit it to storing just 10 recipes, though of course to use the Grainfather Bluetooth control side you will need a paid premium license. The cost of a license is $1.99 USD per month or $19.99 annually, which is really a small price to pay considering all of the features on offer here, including this Grainfather Bluetooth control. It is also worth knowing that if you start a new Brewfather account, then you will get one month's worth of premium for free for evaluation. Shown on screen now are a selection of some of the features on offer as well as the Brewfather website address. In addition to this, Brewfather also allows integration with the Tilt, the Ice Spindle, and soon the Brewbane Float, as well as the Plato Keg and Airlock, plus BrewPi and My Brewbot. The main features that I love about Brewfather are that firstly Brewfather is super accurate in terms of its recipe predictions, so as a recipe writer this is very important to me, and also to know that those that brew my recipes are going to be able to brew the same recipe with the same results. This is certainly key to my process here on YouTube, and it is one of the key reasons why I link my recipes to just Brewfather. I also find the UI of Brewfather to be very fast and easy to use, and almost everything is in a natural intuitive place where I would expect it. I do also have a guide to using Brewfather on my channel, which was actually the very first part of this series, so if you have not seen this yet, then I would suggest heading there next, as this has proved to be very useful for a lot of people, even those that are experienced users. This YouTube channel also has a Facebook group that is open to brewers of all experience levels. To join, simply follow the link shown on screen now. This now brings this video to a close. If you have any questions, then please let me know via YouTube or Facebook. I do hope that you found this video to be useful, interesting and enjoyable. If appropriate, then please like this video on YouTube, and if you've not done so already, then please subscribe. I regularly post new content. Happy brewing!